Previously, you saw LNAV and VNAV engage after takeoff. Now, let's see how we can use some of the MCP autoflight controls to easily accommodate some vertical path changes without disengaging VNAV. VNAV engages after takeoff if there is an active flight plan in the FMC, the performance data has been entered in the FMC, and VNAV is armed. VNAV is usually armed during pre-flight. If VNAV was not armed before takeoff, it can be engaged during any phase of flight by pushing the VNAV switch. Engage VNAV. The airspeed window blanks. Pitch engages in VNAV speed. And the auto throttle changes to thrust reference. This mode of VNAV closely resembles flight level change. Pitch maintains airspeed, while auto throttle controls the vertical path. The FMC uses full climb thrust because it is a more efficient way to climb to cruise altitude. Airspeed commands are generated by the FMC and sent to the autopilot. The FMC sets the speed bug to the new airspeed, and pitch is adjusted to accelerate to the new airspeed. The FMC has the waypoints and altitude restrictions entered on the root legs page. This data is entered during pre-flight and discussed later. A cross at 5,000 feet altitude restriction is displayed for Orden. Therefore, the FMC will level the airplane at this altitude even though the MCP is set to 10,000 feet. The pitch and auto throttle modes change to level the airplane at the Orton altitude restriction. The auto throttle mode controls airspeed while the pitch mode controls vertical path. The vertical path, in this case, is level flight at 5,000 feet. Notice that VNAV remained engaged. This VNAV mode is similar to the altitude hold mode. Now, let's see how to use the MCP to delete FMC altitude restrictions like the one at Orden. The MCP is already set but the FMC still has the altitude restrictions at Orden and Alder. In addition to setting altitudes, the altitude selector is a momentary action switch. Each push of the altitude selector deletes one FMC altitude restriction between the airplane altitude and the MCP altitude. Push the altitude selector to delete the altitude restriction at Orton. Auto throttle and pitch modes change to VNAV climb to satisfy the next altitude restriction. Because the Orton altitude restriction is deleted. Push the altitude selector again. Both altitude restrictions are deleted. Note that waypoints Orton and Alder remain in the FMC flight plan. The MCP is still set at 10,000 feet. But there are no altitude restrictions on the FMC legs page. And the FMC cruise altitude is flight level 250.
Since the MCP window altitude is lower than the FMC cruise altitude, the airplane levels off at the MCP altitude. The thrust mode changes to speed, and the pitch mode changes to VNAV altitude. VNAV altitude becomes the VNAV pitch mode when the airplane levels at the MCP altitude. This mode operates the same as VNAV path to maintain altitude. The VNAV altitude enunciation indicates that you are level at the MCP altitude and not an FMC altitude. Again, notice that VNAV remains engaged. To continue the climb in VNAV, first set the clearance altitude. Then, push the altitude selector. Auto throttle and pitch modes engage. And the airplane begins to climb to cruise altitude. Before reaching the FMC cruise altitude, ATC issues a new cruise altitude. The FMC has the cruise altitude set to flight level 250. To comply with the clearance and update the FMC, first set the MCP altitude. Next, push the altitude selector. With no FMC altitude constraints and the MCP altitude set above the FMC cruise altitude, pushing the altitude selector changes the FMC cruise altitude to the MCP window value. And the airplane levels at the new altitude. Cruise climbs and cruise descents can also be performed while remaining in VNAV. This is accomplished with the altitude selector in a manner similar to what was previously shown. Push the altitude selector. The FMC cruise altitude changes. VNAV changes auto throttle and pitch to climb and the airplane climbs to the new altitude. Cruise descents are performed in the same manner. However, cruise descents can only be initiated if the airplane position is greater than 50 miles from top of descent. The top of descent point is calculated by the FMC. The FMC also calculates a predicted descent path. The path is based on idle thrust throughout the descent. With VNAV engaged and the MCP set to a lower altitude, the airplane will begin descent at the top of descent point. VNAV is engaged. Set the MCP altitude to prepare for the VNAV descent. VNAV path remains engaged so that pitch controls the vertical path during descent. Idle enunciates as the auto throttle retards the thrust levers because the angle of descent path is calculated to maintain the FMC descent speeds for idle thrust. Once the thrust levers reach idle, hold enunciates and thrust can be manually adjusted if necessary. Next, let's look at an early descent in VNAV. Early VNAV descents can be initiated with the MCP 
when within 50 nautical miles of the top of descent point. Set the MCP altitude. Push the altitude selector. The airplane begins to descend in VNAV. The target vertical speed is controlled by the autothrottle. Pitch controls the airspeed. The airplane continues this descent until the path is intercepted. Once on the FMC calculated vertical path, the autothrottle and pitch modes change back to normal descent indications. Next, let's look at a late descent in VNAV. It seems like ATC never lets us fly the descent profile that we want. The airplane did not begin descending at the top of descent point because the MCP is still set to cruise altitude. Remember, VNAV altitude enunciates to make you aware that the airplane is level at the MCP window altitude, not an FMC altitude. ATC has provided descent clearance. Set the MCP. Push the altitude selector to begin the descent. The pitch mode changes to maintain the FMC selected airspeed. The auto throttle initially changes to idle as the thrust levers are retarded to idle. Hold displays when the thrust levers reach the idle stop. The airplane begins an idle thrust descent. This airplane's descent path is above and parallel to the vertical path. The airplane may never intercept the desired path. One way to increase descent rate is to increase airspeed. Push the IAS mock selector. The IAS mock window unblanks at the currently maintained FMC speed. Notice there was not a mode change and VNAV remained engaged. The only change is that you are now setting speed instead of the FMC. This is called speed intervention. Set 325 knots to accelerate the airplane. When the airplane reaches the FMC vertical path, VNAV path engages to keep the airplane on the FMC path. To return control of the airspeed back to the FMC, push the IAS mock selector. The window blanks and the selected speed returns to the FMC economy speed. While on vectors for final, approach control reports the glide slope is out of service due to antenna damage. Since the glide slope is not in service, you will have to do a localizer only approach. The MDA for this approach has been set for you. It is set with the EFIS control panel. Altitude window. However, the altitude increment selector must be set to the auto position. Set the altitude increment selector to auto. Set the MDA into the MCP. The auto flight system intercepts the localizer. While reviewing the approach plate for this approach, you notice the glide slope angle for this runway is the normal 3 degrees. Let's use the flight path angle pitch mode for the final descent to the MDA. Notice the window changes from vertical speed to flight path angle. Next, engage flight path angle. The current airplane flight path angle is displayed. Level flight is 0 degrees. Finally, set a minus 3 degrees flight path angle with the vertical speed flight path angle selector.
You can monitor the airplane's descent angle with the flight path vector and the selected flight path angle symbols on the PFD. Next, let's look at a go-around. Go-around arms when glide slope engages or the flaps are extended. When go-around is initiated, the flight directors appear even if the flight director switches are off. Push either toga switch to initiate the go-around. The auto throttle engages in thrust mode. Thrust is set for a 2,000 feet per minute climb. If full go-around thrust is required, simply push either toga switch a second time. Toga enunciates for roll and for pitch. The autopilot controls roll to maintain current track. Pitch controls either the MCP speed or the speed at go-around initiation, whichever is greater. If the airplane exceeds this speed for more than five seconds, the current speed becomes the target speed. When above 400 feet, a roll mode may be engaged. Engage LNAV. At flap retraction altitude, set speed to the maneuvering speed for the desired flap setting. After flap retraction, a pitch mode may be engaged. Engage VNAV.